Hi everyone and welcome to The Wellbeing Break, a new webinar series on mental well-being. My name is Dennis Persichini and I'm the undergrad well-being champion of the School of Psychology and Clinical Language Sciences and I'm super happy to be the host of this webinar series. So with these episodes, we really hope to give you some insights or ideas on things that you can actually do to improve your daily well-being. Today, I'm excited because we're talking to a health psychologist, Dr. Davina Leatherman, who's going to give you some insights on actually new things that we can try on. Please, Dr. Davina, could you introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Dr. Davina Leatherman. I am a qualified health psychologist. So I recently qualified, and that's why I have to remember to say doctor. Um, and yeah, so I, as a health psychologist, what we're interested in is we're interested in health and well-being. Um, generally with health psychology, we look at physical health, but of course, physical health is linked to mental health. You can't escape that. Um, and my experience and my background has been working in the NHS. So I've worked with people to make lifestyle changes. So people that want to stop smoking, lose weight, um, deal with stress, just anything like that. I've worked one to one with them. Uh, so I did that job for a while and I've also worked in a team where we have courses for people's long-term health conditions. So some diabetes could be anxiety, depression. And so we did some self-management courses there. So I've always had an interest in health and well-being, of course, being a health psychologist. Uh, so today I wanted to talk a little bit about resilience and dealing with stress and also a little bit about mindfulness. Um, so first, also, I'm also going to bring in my own personal experiences because I think that could be helpful as well, um, especially since I've just finished my doctorate quite recently. So I've been studying for a number of years. So I completely understand what it's like to be a student. <laughs> um, and it's quite recent for me. Um, so the first thing about resilience is what do we mean by resilience? Well, resilience is being able to go through challenging times and we can think of it a bit like a rubber ball where a rubber ball is quite pliable, flexible, it bounces back. So that's what we mean. There's lots of definitions and there's lots of different meanings, but essentially it's about no matter what we're going through in life, we can bounce back and we can deal with change. Exams are quite a stressful time, but any time at university can be stressful. So what I just wanted to talk about today was a few tips and some of the research just to think about ways that you might be able to make some changes to your own health and well-being. Um, so it's not just for the exam period. I think that's the key thing to say is you could actually take this away and use it at any time. Um, so I've kind of explained briefly what resilience means and it's such a big topic. I can't go into all of that today. Um, I recently completed a course on Future Learn. Have you heard of Future Learn, Dennis? Oh no, I actually haven't. Can you tell us something more about it? Um, okay, so Future Learn is there's loads of free courses online. And in fact, I think when uh, this year started, there was an email to all the undergraduates about a course on anxiety and depression in young people. And that was done at the Reading, of Univers uh, Reading University. So you will be able to have a look at free courses online. And there's things like one I just completed was called Resilience at Work. There's one, ones on mindfulness. There's so many free courses. I can't go to all of them, but I definitely recommend having a look at Future Learn. You can also have a look at LinkedIn. They also have learning as well for, um, you know, for future career development. But it all feeds into these kind of what we call softer skills. Um, so it's like emotional intelligence, um, just being able to be good communicators and being able to be resilient. Um, so the, the key thing that I would say is, so I'm going to bring in now something called self-care, a term called self-care, which I'm sure you've all heard of. I think because it's a bit of a buzzword, people might see it as a bit of a fad, but actually we need to think about self-care like healthcare. And Susie Redding is another great psychologist to follow online. I've been following a lot of her work. And on a Monday, she does these micro moments, which are kind of... Mm, almost brief mindfulness meditations, but it can be anything. And it's just really dealing with what's going on in the world at the moment. So there's been a lot of useful things about COVID, change happening. Um, and so she, I would definitely recommend her. Her name's Susie Redding. So it's S-U-Z-Y Redding, like Redding University. Um, and uh, yeah, you can catch up on videos on Instagram, having a look at um, some really useful information there. 
again, you can also just look at TED Talks because I think looking at what other people have done and taking that on board can help you think about what changes you want to make. The key that I'm going to say is with anything in life, you, if you just listen to someone talking, it's not going to make any difference. You have to go away and actually try new things and implement them and reflect and then go back. So one of the things that I've learned is you always think I'm so busy, I don't have time to do that. It's actually a bit of a kind of misconception because we spend so long then, you, if you don't implement the small tiny things daily, which is the self-care, you're actually going to build up your stress and it's going to make you feel like you have less time. Whereas if you look after yourself, then you will feel that you have more time, you have more energy. So all the things like healthy eating, exercise, sleeping well. I mean, there's so much research out there. So I'm briefly going to talk a little bit about some of the research. Um, so one of the things to really consider is, is being outdoors. And even if it's just for a few minutes a day, finding somewhere with some greenery, even if it's looking out your window and looking at the trees and just being aware of nature. Uh, there was a study done a few years ago in England with 18,000 participants and they asked everyone to go outside and do something in nature every day for a month. And what they found is participants, it's not really surprising, but they reported feeling a lot more um, happier. They felt their well-being was improved and they felt their health was improved. So that's just a really simple thing that we can all do. But again, it's a case of you might think I haven't got five minutes in the day. Um, but I know personally, I might spend like a lot of time on my phone or watching TV and it's about making that time and it all adds up. And it is also a case of I can tell you what works for me, uh, but we're all very different. And I watched Dr. Kira McCabe's uh, talk and that really resonated with me about having something that you're interested in. So again, it's really finding out what works for you, what brings meaning to your life. Um, so for me, exercise, mindfulness, um, being social and meeting up with my friends, making time for that and, and healthy eating are all the things that I know I need in my life. But um, it could be completely different for you. So it's finding out what actually helps and playing around with it. Um, another thing about resilience that I just wanted to mention briefly was um, there was a long study by Werner et al. where they looked at 600 children in Hawaii over a 32 year period. So it's a longitudinal study. And they were thinking, they were looking at why are some people a lot more resilient than other people? Why do some people manage to deal with adversity and difficult times and they might come from a difficult background, but they still really cope with things well in life. And what they found was having a supportive caregiver is really important. And now obviously that you can say, well, that's kind of down to luck. It depends where, you, you're, where you're brought up and who's around you. It doesn't have to even be a parent. It can be a teacher. It could be someone else just being supportive and there to listen to you. Um, so obviously there's a little bit of limited control on that. But the other thing they found is the psychological aspect. And that comes down to the internal locus of control. They found that these children they might not have been the cleverest children, they might not have had all the resources, but they had the sense that they were responsible for their outcomes and they were, you know, they knew that they could control their lives. And that's the thing I think you always got to remember is having that kind of sense of how we can work on our internal locus of control. And that's all the things that come back to mind, um, self-care and all of that is build your confidence and your self-efficacy on, um, if you look after yourself, then it improves your confidence with everything else. And you feel more confident in being able to communicate and get tasks done and about your future work prospects. I know being a student, I personally myself felt many times of anxiety and stress. And I never, or I, I had a lot of um, self doubt with my doctorate as well. Was I ever going to finish it? And obviously, looking back, you can, <laughs> it's with hindsight, you can go, oh, I wish I never. I actually put myself through all that stress because it was unnecessary. That's with hindsight. Um, so what I would say is if you can use those self-care techniques and work out what, what actually works for you, it can help you keep stay more centered and calm and hopefully like reduce that stress because it's unnecessary. It, stress doesn't help us get anything done. It's just, 
it's there to remind us that we have important things, but it's how we deal with that stress um, that can move us forward in a positive way. But if we get stuck in that cycle of negative thoughts and negative feelings, it can really be quite damaging. Um, so I'm just going to quickly talk about mindfulness. Is that okay, Dennis? Have I got time? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so one of the things about mindfulness that's really great is, um, first of all, there's a bit of a misconception about what is mindfulness. So it's not about stopping your thoughts. It's about actually being aware of your thoughts. And John Kabat-Zinn is one of the founders of the contemporary mindfulness movement. Um, and this is how he defines mindfulness. I think it's quite powerful. So he says mindfulness is awareness that arises through paying attention on purpose in the present moment, non-judgmentally. So it's about actually knowing what's on your mind. And when we approach our thoughts, it's about how we can pay attention to our thoughts and our intentions, our behaviors, but in a curious way and be generous to ourselves and self-compassionate. So one of the things that you can do, um, I'm just gonna do like a quick example. You can put your hands on your belly and breathe in and out and close your eyes if you want. And just focus on your breath. Now you're gonna get thoughts coming through. And it's not about ignoring those thoughts, it's actually just being aware of what those thoughts are, but not interacting with them. So you might be aware of your thought, but then it's focusing, going back to your breath and focusing on your breath. And then you might get small thoughts coming. So this is just a very quick, simple, really quick mindfulness example that I'm giving you. Um, but there's so many guided meditations that you can go through, guided mindfulness things. You could do mindful walking, just going outside and being aware of how the, the pavement feels on your feet and what's happening outside. Because even when we were going outside, walking, eating, brushing our teeth, going to the shower every day, we're not actually being mindful. I mean, I know I'm not it's normally thinking about other things. But just bringing that small bit of mindfulness in and deciding what opportunities you could try it out. Um, it's a way with just connecting with your thoughts and becoming more aware. You know, it's, a, it's, a, it's something that you have to practice. You can't, if you wanted to build muscles, you couldn't just say, oh, I'm going to sit on the couch all day. You've got to go to the gym. And it's the same with mindfulness. If you want to get better at it, you've got to slowly practice. So what I'd always say is start off small. And even if it's one, two minutes a day, play around with different exercises. You can use Headspace, you can look on YouTube. Um, there's so much out there. But I definitely personally have found mindfulness really helpful in my life and breathing. Um, and when I was pregnant with my almost three year old, I, I, I did a course on hypnobirthing and that focuses a lot on breathing. And I've seen the power of breathing. So even just sometimes we forget to breathe and it's even just a case of taking a few deep breaths um, you know, when we're feeling stressed and anxious, as simple as that. But if you regularly do it, it becomes a habit. Um, and so Dr. Sa Dan Siegel said one way to think about approaching mindfulness is to think of this acronym called COLE, which is curiosity, openness, acceptance, and love. So it's being mindful, non-judgmental, um, and if you're ever feeling quite stressed and anxious, I would say, think about what advice you would give to a friend, because I think we can be the harshest critics to ourselves. Um, and so just think about if my friend was in this situation, I'm sure you've all heard this before, but again, it's about practicing it. Um, because when we get stressed that, you know, we get the fight or flight and it takes over. And actually the reason that happens is because all the blood goes from your brain to your body to run away. So you don't think rationally and so you forget all these things but the more you practice them the more they become just normal that was so interesting i really enjoyed it do you have any other advice for for students um i would say another really important thing is to think about sleep because you um 
sleep is really important. If you don't, there's been a lot of research and you can have a look at the research out there, but if you don't get the right amount of sleep, you can't learn. So learning is obviously important for exams and for students. Um, and also it's about emotional regulation. If you don't get good quality sleep, you can't regulate, regulate your emotions. And so there's been so much research out there. Um, the final thing to say as well about resilience is although you know some people are more resilient than others, it's something that can be learned. So that's the key thing to take away. Um, I, I, I'm sure a lot of you have heard about neuroplasticity and how the brain is quite malleable and you can actually change your brain. And that, that's what studies have found with mindfulness is that you, it actually changes your brain um, into being more calm and, and centered and all these other things. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I really enjoyed the, this interview. I really enjoyed the, the, the practical examples and tips that you gave us. So thank you. That was absolutely interesting. So yeah, thank you. Thank you to Dr. Davina Lademan for her time today and for sharing all these this resources. As always, to conclude this episode, I would like to, to invite you to have a look at all the resources that the University of Reading offers to support students' well-being. So you can have a look at the essential page of the website where you can find all the services and as well as the Russo pages. So or the website again, or even on Facebook. And I also highly recommend you to have a look at the Life Tools program, which offers a series of webinars on well-being as well as study tips. Every week is different topics and it's really, really worth it. So yeah, so thank you everyone. And I will see you in the next episode of The Wellbeing Break. Thank you.